How's everyone doing? Thanks for joining me on my small engine repair channel. Today's project's on this uh, Troy built three stage uh, gas um, snow blower. And the problem that it has with it is, is that uh, the uh, skid plate and the skid shoes are worn out. So we're going to take a look at that and I'm going to show you how to replace those items. All right, so uh, I was just doing some general maintenance on this machine, uh, guys, and this is a couple of things that I noticed. Um, first off, the uh, skid plate here is uh, rounded over uh, pretty much all the way down the full length. And that's just from hitting the sidewalk over and over and over. Of course, everyone's sidewalk's got those uh, sections where you got one that's slightly higher than the other, so you get a little bit of a bump there. You smash that skid plate into that bump and over and over. Um, especially if it gets worn down and very thin, then that metal will bend over uh, every time it hits something and uh, it's going to end up looking like this. Now the main culprit and problem for that is not actually the plate itself. Um, it's actually these shoes. Uh, on this particular model, the shoes that came with it were plastic and you can see they're actually double sided. Uh, the customer had previously uh, worn down the one side uh, of this particular skid shoe and they, repla they replaced it or just flipped it over uh, to wear down the bottom side. And that's exactly what you'd want to do. They, they're made that way so that you can use them basically for uh, double the length. The problem is, is that if you don't set these up properly so that the skid plate actually runs, you know, slightly off the ground a little bit, then uh, when this particular shoe hits the uh, uneven pavement, it's not going to do its job and lift up that skid plate so that it doesn't smash into the uh, sidewalk every time. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to replace both of these. Uh, we're going to replace these plastic shoes with some metal shoes, uh, which are also double sided, but they will wear uh, a little bit uh, less uh, frequently. And uh, we're going to replace that uh, skid plate. All right, so before I uh, flip this uh, machine up on its bucket to access the bottom side of that skid plate, a couple of things that I had to do or I, I'm going to need to do uh, first off is um, either empty the tank so it's less than half full or in my case the customer brought it with a full tank of gas. So I put a uh, plastic bag between the cap and the tank and that will help prevent any fuel spillage when I lift this up. The other thing, uh, unfortunately, uh, is that this particular machine doesn't have a fuel shutoff. So whatever fuel, even if I flip this machine up, whatever fuels in this fuel line uh, is going to enter into the carburetor. And unfortunately, in this particular on this particular setup, the carburetor will leak fuel. Uh, so what I've done is I've drained the fuel from the bottom of the uh, float, uh, sorry, the float bowl on the carburetor. So that's there. There's actually two nuts there, or two bolts. Uh, and the one closest to us is actually the uh, bolt for the drain plug. So I just drained out the fuel from the float bowl of the carburetor. Uh, before that, I pinched off the fuel line because it doesn't have a shut off, which would be nice. Um, and to access all of that, of course, I had to take this front cover off. So I've pinched off the fuel line, no more fuel going in the carburetor. Carburetor is now empty, so there's no risk of fuel uh, draining out onto my floor. Uh, but just in case, I also put a piece of cardboard down there. Um, so that way, if it does leak, uh, it's gonna leak hopefully onto the, the cardboard and not onto my floor. So now we're ready to uh, flip it up on its bucket. The one other thing I'm sorry I forgot to mention is, is just make sure that your shoot control is to one side or the other and not fully out because if you flip it over and your chute is pointing straight out, it might actually land on that chute. All right, so now I'm just gonna flip it over and we're gonna take a look at the bottom side. <clears throat> so 
So when we flip it over, we can see the uh, the uh, after effects, unfortunately, of not having your skid shoes set up correctly. Uh, you can see the skid shoe is worn down basically to the metal of the skid plate here uh, on both sides. You can see it's flush here. These shoes are actually supposed to sit a little bit proud of the body so you don't really wear away the uh, skid plate too much. The other thing is, is that it does is it actually wears away the bolts, the nuts and bolts that actually hold the, the skid plate to the body. And then you can actually see that the actual body or the, of the bucket is actually also been worn away over time here. So uh, unfortunately, guys, this is the, the byproduct of not having your, your shoes set up correctly. So what, unfortunately, what we're going to be able to do, we're, we're going to have to do here is actually uh, basically just grind these off. Uh, these nuts and bolts are no longer any good just to be able to get off this, uh, this skid plate. The other thing you're going to have to do is also take off the uh, skid shoes uh, because there is a, this nut and bolt right here actually holds on the corner of the skid plate. The skid plate goes down and then in, and that's how it fastens as well. All right, so now that all four of these bolts have been uh, basically ground off, now what you need to do is take off the, at least this top one, but since we're replacing the shoes anyways, I'm gonna take both of these off, take the shoe right off so we can access the skid plate. All right, so a closer look at this skid plate, you can see this top side before they flipped it over was basically ground down to nothing on this one. So they flipped it over. Now this side is has got lots of meat, so this is still usable, uh, but the customer wants me to replace them and I'm gonna replace them with the uh, metal ones, which I'll show you here shortly. Um, the problem is, is they just weren't adjusted properly. So they, they would need to come so that they sit down a little proud of all of the structural part of the actual uh, snowblower. So I'll take the other one off here and then we'll be able to slide this um, skid plate right out. All right, so both sides are off now. So this skid plate should really just kind of slide out of here. Now, it might not be as easy because, there we go. This, uh, Part is also jacked up a little bit here, which I'm going to uh, kind of address as well. So here's a better look at it. You can see it's just rounded right over. Now, you know, in a pinch, you could probably kind of grind this so that it's nice and smooth uh, and get a little bit more use out of it, but uh, you know, best to probably just, just replace that with a new one. So again, underneath here, it's it's all curled over. So what I'm gonna do is just use do a little bit of metal work here. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to flip this back over um, just to try and get this semi smoothened out. I mean, you're missing pieces here completely uh, or it's curled right over. The other thing this could pose a problem with is, is the actual auger. Uh, the auger, you know, could eventually, you know, the clearance here between my finger and the auger or the uh, housing and the uh, auger is, is not huge. So it's possible that that could cause a problem as well. So I'll flip this back over and uh, we'll do a little bit of pounding and uh, uh, I'll see what I can do with the uh, actual bucket of this machine. So before I get back to installing uh, the uh, shave plate and the skid shoe, I just wanted to show you the difference in the new versus the old. You can see how much has worn down off of the old shave plate. And also here's the metal version of the skid shoe. 
versus the uh, polymer or plastic version. Obviously this is gonna wear down much faster. And this is even double-sided as well. It's, yeah, it's thinner, but it's gonna wear less for sure uh, over the course of time. So this one should last you longer. Here are the part numbers for that shave plate and the skid shoes. And uh, just be mindful guys that this is very specific. Part numbers are pretty specific to the model of the machine you have. So if you're looking up the uh, model, uh, this is Troy built. You can go to troybuilt.com. And uh, the model number on these snow blowers is typically here on the underside of the belly pan for the transmission. Uh, there's a tag usually on there. And you can see that model number starts with 31BH there. You just type that in uh, under the parts section and uh, it should give you a uh, parts list for this particular machine. So if you have this exact same machine, then those definitely, those part numbers will work for you. Okay, so we're ready to put this stuff back together here now. Um, so I'm just gonna start fitting everything together. All right, skid plates back on here now. So we're ready to uh, go ahead and adjust these shoes as well. I'm just going to get the last of the hardware kind of get, get started here. And then we'll flip it back up. And we'll go ahead and show you how to adjust these shoes properly. Okay, so when adjusting your uh, skid shoes, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that the uh, wheels, if they are uh, air filled wheels, that the tire pressures are set to the proper tire pressure, somewhere around 14, 15 PSI. And make sure both sides are set correctly because obviously that will kind of put things out of balance if the one wheel is higher than the other as far as inflation is concerned. Then try and find yourself a nice uh, level spot, uh, sidewalk, driveway, uh, garage here. You can see this is uh, pretty much uh, as level as it can get here. Uh, and then the last thing is, is you're going to want to get yourself a little piece of uh, cardboard or, um, you know, some uh, piece of laminate tile or something that's, you know, about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And that's going to kind of give you the height that you want that skid plate above the uh, surface there. Um, so... Uh, what that's going to do is is to prevent that skid plate from actually riding on the ground and then the last thing you do is is just tighten up your skid shoes here because you know they're gonna they're gonna sit flat on the ground 
and then you just tighten up these bolts on both sides so that this thing rides on that skid shoe and not on the shave plate or the skid plate. So I'm pushing down with my, my thumb here. I'm holding the, the head of the carriage bolt on the back side. And I'm just tightening this guy down here. Okay, and before I get it super tight, let's get it most of the way tight. Because there's still a little bit of adjustability here. Be able to make sure that this is pushed down all the way. Just getting it started here and then I'll come around and put pressure on the top side. it guys so I'll do the same on the other side and then I'll come back when I'm done okay so the shoes are all tight now on both sides and you can hopefully see there's a bit of a gap underneath that shave plate there and uh, that's such a small gap it's not gonna leave a lot of residual um, snow left behind when you're when you're blowing now if you have a gravel driveway you're going to want to adjust those shoes down even further to leave a little bit more of a gap maybe a quarter to three eighths of an inch of gap so that way you don't pick up a lot of stones and, and start chucking stones through your uh, chute uh, and out into your lawn um, so hopefully this video uh, is helpful guys if uh, you like the content, please uh, show me a little love, smash the like button, share it with your friends. Uh, and if you're not a subscriber, consider doing so. That really helps me out on the channel as well. So until our next project, take care.